guys, um, I'm going to do a video today that is basically aimed just at neck and shoulder and kind of upper body issues. I've had a few people message me about this. So um, it's going to be yoga poses with weight work. So if you've got yourself a, a small pair of weights, if you haven't, just grab two small bottles of water or even two tins of, of beans or something. Um, but we're going to be doing a combination of mobility work, then strengthening work, and then some deep stretches to help with um, shoulder issues, neck issues, or just basic maintenance to stop these areas from becoming a problem. Um, so I'm going to get started off. I'm hoping you can see me on the screen um, closely, but I might keep moving back and forth to the screen so that you can kind of show, show you a closer up view of some of the moves that we're doing. Um, but one of the reasons that I think a lot of people are struggling at the moment is obviously, you know, during lockdown, we've spent a bit more time sitting in front of TVs, maybe, um, or texting, computers, laptops, you know, being on our gadgets. We tend to adopt this forward head position. Other things that can cause it, you know, if you're not a TV person, you might be outside more in the garden at the moment. You know, the weather's been reasonably OK for a few weekends. We tend to go out and overdo it in the garden. Or you might have been sat in your car, sat at work. So there's certain things that we do with our posture that just develop this kind of slightly forward flexed upper body position. Our head and neck come out of alignment, so we tend to bring the head slightly forwards, we tend to round the upper back, which creates a chain effect of shortening our front body. So we shorten up the muscles across our chest, for example, our pectoral muscles. We tend to shorten our front abdominal muscle. We tend to lengthen our back body. So if you think about the muscles across the upper back, they become overstretched, so they become overstimulated, so they switch off to some extent. Um, and so we get this combination of short tightness um, in the front of our body and long weakness in the back of our body. And really that's the opposite to what we need. For our body to be in good posture, we need our front to be quite open and we need our back muscles, um, our back line muscles to be strong and supportive to hold us in this good position. So I'm going to show you a few bits today. So obviously if you have got any shoulder issues, as always, you know, make sure that you, you, you're aware of what you're dealing with before you do any exercise programme, particularly if you're not used to my classes, um, my style of teaching. But I'm going to show you some simple mobility drills and some decompressive drills, and a bit of activation stuff, how to fire up certain muscles that tend to be a bit switched off. And then we'll do some strength work for those muscles that need to be stronger to support good posture and some deep stretches for the muscles that tend to be um, the, the problem areas. Um, but we're going to start just with some simple neck mobility with any issue, but particularly obviously with upper body, always look at the neck because, um, you know, even if you think the issue might be shoulders or mid back, good chance that neck alignment or, or tension or imbalances in the neck can be aggravating it, if not causing it. So just sit yourself comfortably and think about lifting up through the top of the head. So we want to feel our shoulders are down and back, our chest is open, our arms are just resting comfortably, and we're just feeling that the crown of the head is being pushed upwards. So we're trying to create this feeling of lengthening the neck. If you wanted to, you could gently place a hand on top of the head, or even both hands, and try and feel that you're pushing your hands up with the crown of the head whilst pulling your shoulders down. So creating this space between the top of our shoulder and our ears. So we're not actually pressing the head, we're just very lightly resting the hands, but I'm trying to get the feeling of pushing my crown up into the palms. Okay, and then release your arms down, keep that tall, lifted feeling. Okay, think of your nose as your centre of a circle, and we're just going to do a very small circular motion. Almost as if your nose is a pencil and you're drawing a little circle directly in front of you. So it's quite a gentle, easy movement. Now be aware if you get dizzy easily, um, this obviously can affect your vestibular system. It might make you a bit dizzy, a bit motion sick if you do suffer from that. So take your eyes around with the movement. Maybe slow it down a little bit. Okay, reverse it. We're going to go the other way. And you would do this quite slowly just five or six times each way. You can go a little bit longer if you wanted to, but that would be enough. And then come back to centre, and we're now going to start to just go through flexion extension. So let your head drop, chin to chest, tip back, just working through that range. Try to breathe easy as you're doing this movement, so we're not holding the breath. And again, just taking the gaze from top to bottom. If you wanted to, you can close your eyes while you're doing this. You would get more of a sense of what you're feeling. Um, but again, just be aware that that might make you a little bit dizzy if you are 
quite sensitive to travel sick or motion sickness. Yeah, and if it feels okay, you can make it bigger. You're going to start to really let the head hang as you drop down. Open the throat as you lift up. and then come back to your neutral point. So we're gonna twist now, keeping the chin slightly lifted, we're rotating from left to right. Shoulder girdle stays still. Go as far as you can, trying to think the outside of the jaw stays level with the inside of the jaw. So as we're twisting, we don't wanna feel that we're kind of tipping too much. We wanna try and keep that even line as we rotate. Okay, again back to neutral. Now we're gonna tilt ear to shoulder. Okay, roll your shoulders back a few times. Just let your arms hang. Now, as well as neck, I'm also gonna look at the end of the chain in terms of our kind of kinetic chain here. So obviously our shoulder girdle, this area here, can be affected by above and below. So it can be affected by tension issues in our neck, but also in our wrists. So we're gonna do a little bit of wrist mobility work. You're just gonna to start to circle your hands, rolling them out. Wrist joints can get quite compressed. The muscles around the wrists and the forearms can get quite tense. And as we know, you know, with one big chain, everything can affect everything else. So don't assume your point of pain or your problem area is where the source is. You know, sometimes it can be, um, but often it's above or below. And there's other things that can play a role in that. And it's just a good idea to do wrist mobility work anywhere. They are a joint designed to be a mobile joint to act as a bit of a shock absorber. So we're just rolling the hands both ways. And then clasp the hands together and start to circle around. Clicking, creaking, popping, fine as long as it's not painful, it's quite a normal thing. Change in the direction. Okay, and then start to just fold forwards and back. So we're trying to get a little bit of a release in the back of the wrist. So just a rocking action. Okay, wiggle your fingers, use your thumb and middle finger and we're just going to slightly compress our wrist so we squeeze, creating a ring around that wrist crease, we squeeze and you're just going to wiggle your hand, so we're just creating a little bit of traction, rolling the hand around, doing both sides, so I'm squeezing around the crease of my wrist. And I'm just moving my wrist forwards and back, rolling it. Oh, there's a good click. Okay, wiggle your fingers again and then just gently stretch the backs of the wrists. So we're stretching this area here. If you preferred, you could do this by just resting your hands alongside you. But it's quite nice to just bring the backs of the hands together. Feel that you're drawing your elbows in towards you. And just hold that for a few moments. You could just rest, seated for example, you could just rest your hands here to get that same stretch. Okay, and then shake the hands, just loosen your elbows, bend and extend. Palms coming towards you. Palms pushing away from you. your arms right so I'm going to come up to standing now so I'm just going to show you some postural things with the body so to start with our neck um, I'm actually going to adjust the angle so you can see me so you can get close to the camera so we're going to start with our neck position so neutral neck we mean that we want the cheekbones to be roughly lined up over our collarbones we don't want to kind of have our head forwards or tipping down or round if we're trying to feel that we've got an even distance between the front of the neck, the back of the neck, and the sides, left and right. We want to keep our shoulders quite low, and we also want to keep our shoulders back. So we've got that neutral alignment, and we're just going to go for a little stretch here. So you're going to drop the head and just point the nose to the armpit on one side. Just hold that for a breath. Feel your head get a little heavier. Start to feel your shoulders drop. 
Notice where you feel it's a good chance that you may feel it around this area here, upper trapezius muscles. This bit here tends to be a real grabby muscle. You know, it kind of it elevates whenever we get stressed out. Changing sides, so hold that stretch. Just breathing easy. Just important that when you're stretching, you don't hold your breath. You try and work with the breath. So as you breathe out, you get that feeling of releasing, relaxing, becoming a little heavier. Okay, and again, come back to centre. Right, so more mobility work now on shoulders. So obviously, if you have got any shoulder pain, you would take these movements quite gently. We're going to be using a weight, and I'm going to do a very gentle decompressive movement on our shoulder to start with. Because one of the other problems that we can get is when our joints get compressed, the joint endings get too close together. And that can be from impact, from repetitive use, um, from just general poor posture, the way that you sit, the way that you sleep, for example. So we're going to do a little bit of work on decompressing. So you're going to need um, a very light weight. So I've got a baby half kilo here, very, very sweet, very cute, just enough to give me that little bit of extra weight in my arm. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to tip myself forwards. I'm engaging my abs to support my back and I'm just supporting on one arm. You could lean onto a table or a chair, but we want a bit of space in front of us. And I'm going to let my arm just hang. Now keep your back body flat. So imagine you've got a glass of water in the middle of your back. Yeah, and we want to hold it there. We don't want to twist or round. We're trying to just keep the back nice and flat. And I'm just letting the weight gently pull my arm down. So I feel as if my arm's being stretched out of my shoulder. Then I'm going to just start to swing this. So very gently, just taking it from side to side, allowing my elbow to just flex naturally. You might feel a bit of clicking and clunking going on as you do this. That's fine as long as it's not painful. Okay, it's a nice, easy movement. Okay, and then we're going to start to take it forwards and back. So I'm just having the back of my hand is now on the outside. I'm just letting my arm gently swing. Oh, try not to hit yourself with the spatial awareness going on there. Okay, and then come back to centre and just make a very small circle. Now I know some of you that come to my regular classes, we do a big version of this. Yeah, we do the kind of the active version where we're just using our arm and we make it bigger and bigger. But for today we're going to do a gentler version with weight. So we're still doing that circular motion, but we're just making it a little softer, a little easier. Try and feel the heaviness of the weight pulling on your arm. Okay, change in direction. So if you needed to, you could lean onto something to support your back here, if that was more comfortable. Okay, and then just roll yourself up for a moment. So draw your tummy in, roll your shoulders back. Change your sides. So again, we're just going to tip, keep your back flat, let your arm drop. A little softness there, so we feel as if that shoulder, keeping our shoulders level, but we feel as if that shoulder's being pulled out. And we're just going to gently swing this across the body. Okay, so I'm going from side to side. Okay, and then I'm going to come to the outside and I'm going to start to swing it forwards and back. Okay, and then I'm going to come into the centre and I'm just going to do a little circular movement, just rolling around. If you started to get a bit tired from the flex position, you could obviously, you know, break this up, do the first bit, have a little rest, do the second bit. I'm just showing you all four parts to this. And then change the direction, circle the other way. Okay, and then hands to thighs, draw the tummy in, squeeze your bum, roll yourself back up. Okay, pop your weight down for a moment. So coming through shoulders then, so the problems that we tend to get, pectoral muscles in particular, tend to shorten up, so we need to stretch and open these out. Our mid-back muscles, rhomboid muscles in particular, kind of upper trapezius area, 
these muscles tend to be a little bit overstretched and they just don't work properly. A bit like when your glutes don't activate quickly enough to create that, that response. These muscles don't work as well. So you've got a couple of things that you can do. Um, now I use the thump massager. One of these badges, they're brilliant. And I use that all around my mid upper back. You know, I'll kind of use this for a good minute or so if I'm going so to be doing some training. So that's one thing that you could do if you've got more access to one of those. Um, or you could get someone to activate your mid back by just getting them to tap and drum. Think of this space, so between the shoulders, just above your mid back, just below your neck. That's the area that we're trying to target. Or if you haven't got any of those available, you're just going to grab yourself a board, a tennis ball, golf ball, whatever. Put it on the wall lean onto it so you're putting a bit of pressure onto it you're trying to sink into those muscles and you're just going to start to roll and lean on the wall so you're using this as a bit of a stimulator really try and avoid your spine you don't want to be on your bony bit you're trying to get on the fleshy bits either side but you could work on this for a good minute or so kind of finding any little tender spots and perhaps just hold it there for a, a 10 to 15 seconds couple of breaths so that's another way of activating your mid-back muscles is to use some like a tennis ball or a massage ball. But we need these muscles to fire up, we need them to be switched on so they actually work when we ask them to. Otherwise what tends to happen is your muscles here, which are already overstimulated, you know, they're on muscles that pull up around our neck, they will just try and do the work of every arm movement, every shoulder movement that we do, and they end up getting much, much shorter and tighter. These get weaker, just that whole vicious circle. So try and activate your mid-back as well. Okay, a little bit more mobility work that we're going to do now then. So we're just going to do some big circles. So think, take a breath in, reach the arms out. Your range might be here, that's fine. You might be able to go all the way up and then just let your arms drop. So just a few nice big circles, lifting up and lowering down. If you're really struggling with this, you could do this line on the ground so your arms are, your shoulders are a bit more supported. If you imagine you're just on the flat ground, sweeping back and coming down. Okay, now we're going to come forward, so we sweep out, we come forwards, we sweep out, we come forward. So if you notice I'm rotating so my palms are open and facing out as I lift up, and then I bring my hands over and I come down. And again, you could do this line off the ground if you preferred, if you needed that bit of support. Okay, I'm going to change the direction, so I'm going to go up first, open out, come back to the hips, lift up open out, come back. Okay, so we're just trying to warm up all the soft tissue and mobilising around the joints, creating space. Okay, and then just roll your shoulders, let your arms hang heavy. Okay, so a little bit of rotation work now then. So we're going to do, and again, you can do this recline, you can do this lying down, we can even do it leaning against the wall if you preferred. We're just going to have our arms in line with our chest, so our elbows lined up with our shoulders and our forearms are lined up above our elbows. So we've got this little right angle going on. I'm going to see if we can pivot forwards and back. Okay, so we're just kind of wringing out our shoulders. We're twisting from the top here. Whilst we're doing this, just check again that your shoulders don't try and lift up. They will try if you're not aware of it, if you're not keeping an eye on that, they'll start to elevate. So we want to keep them low as we rotate and feel your mid back muscles squeeze as you tuck your shoulders under. Okay, so doing this standing or doing this against the wall is obviously going to be harder than doing it reclined because of the, the angle that we're in, we've got more weight, more load. Once you've done a few together, we're going to alternate so one comes back, one comes down. And you could go a little bit slower if you needed to with this one. We just want to feel that we're moving smoothly so we're not kind of throwing our arms around. We're keeping the movement really smooth and controlled. Okay, shake your arms out. That's quite an intense one to do. So you might have a bit of a lactic acid build up after that. Just roll your shoulders. Give them a bit of a, a rub if you need to. That just have to disperse that. Let your arms just hang down. Okay, so a couple more mobility drills. So all we're going to do... Um, now we're going to come on to some inner range work, what we call inner range work, which we're just kind of taking our arms through full extension, flexion, trying to target certain muscles. And we're going to do this from our box position. So if you come to hands and knees, okay, and before we do, we're just going to do a little bit more 
work on our lower, our wrist and forearm, a bit more mobility work. So plant the hands. Okay, and just twist. So you're kind of rolling the inside of your elbow to face forwards, and then you try to twist it to face back. So we're kind of wringing out our arms. We've got our hands planted. Good old clip going on there in my wrist joint. Okay, so that's just a nice easy movement. Just rotate there. Now think about your back position. So gently engage through your abs. Hips are above knees. We're going to do straight arm lifts from here. So I'm just going to adjust the camera again. Hopefully you see all the main shot. Keep your back flat and we're going to take our right arm and see if we can reach it out in front. And then we're just going to hold it there. Now you can rotate your wrist so your thumbs on top, palm faces in. Pull your shoulder away from your ear. Slight softness in your elbow so that we're not locking that through. But we're trying to lift and hold without lifting or arching the back. So keep your back flat as if you've got a glass of water in your mid back still. Okay, and then we're going to come down and change sides. So left arm, we're going to reach forwards. Just see if we can hold it. And again, your range might be more here, here, here. You're going as far as you comfortably can without using your back. Yeah, keep the back flat. Okay, and then we come back. So now we're going to do sides. So think of your right arm and just take it out to the side to begin with. My palm is facing down, my thumb is forwards, my elbow is slightly soft. I'm rolling my shoulder away from my neck to start with. Chest stays squared up. And I'm going to see if I can lift that arm. I'll show you from a different angle here, out to the side. Okay, so again, I'm not twisting to get the height. I'm just trying to lift my arm. So my range might be here, here, Go as far as you can, keeping that shoulder rolling back, but without allowing your body or your hips to help you. And then just see if you can hold it there. So this is our strengthening work now. This is gonna strengthen those muscles. And we're aiming for a good 10 seconds if possible. You know, if it gets to the point where it's dead easy, you could then start to maybe grab your light weight, make it a bit more challenging. Hold that for 10 seconds. But you realize how heavy your arms are when you're doing this kind of thing. Okay, change in size then. So right hand's gonna come down. So my left arm, I'm just gonna step it out, fingertips to the ground, roll my shoulder away from my neck to start with, and then just start to lift. Finding that range, so it might be here. It might be a lot different to the other side, especially if you are working with any kind of injury or issue. So tummy in, front body stays flat. I'm lifting and I'm holding. So I'm squeezing that shoulder blade back. I'm trying to keep my shoulder from tipping up into my neck or my ear. Okay, come back down. Right, just round and release your back a few times. Okay, now round up, sit back into your child pose. So the hips are going to go back to heel, stretch the arms forwards, rest the head, try and draw your shoulders away from your ears. Okay, fold your arms back now. So we come into embryo pose. So we reach the fingers back, palms are facing up, and I'm allowing my shoulders to just drape. Okay, hands are gonna come to chest, and I'm just gonna come slowly back up into my box position. Right, so a bit more strength with it now. So again, targeting this mid back. So you want to be mindful of these muscles, these muscles that we're trying to get to kind of squeeze and activate. And what we're going to do is just some single raises or some renegade row work. Now I'm just going to show you from a box position today because we're focusing on upper body. Um, you can do this from plank though if you if you did want to add a bit more of a strength element into the, the rest of the body. Um, but we're just going to target shoulder girdle. So I'm keeping my chest centre of my chest pointing down, pull my shoulders away from my ears, my neck is neutral, and I'm just going to slowly lift, so I'm pulling my elbow up towards the ceiling, and I'm placing it back to the ground. Now if you've got weights that you can use as handles, like you can see here, my hand comfortably sits underneath this, my knuckles aren't being squashed, 
you could alternate this so you're going to do left and then right if not if you've maybe got wrist weights you're just going to do one side at a time so one hand would be your base so you would lift and place it's more important that you get good control smooth reps than you know how many you do or, or kind of the pace that you're at so try and keep it steady obviously we're aiming for roughly 10 or 12 of these on each side if you get into the point where you could do 30 or 40 perhaps go up a weight go to a heavier weight you could even use you know if you're super strong here you could use some like kettlebells that would work quite well as with this one with this movement but it's about the mindfulness it's about keeping the movement really smooth so we're pulling up elbow stays tucked in i'm lifting the back of my arm up i'm keeping my shoulder away from my ear and i'm placing the weight down okay i'm not just dropping it i'm pulling up and I'm placing it down and as I do that I'm trying to really target that space between my mid back lifting and lowering okay so just keep this going so if you are working one side at a time do maybe 10 or 12 and then change sides if you're alternating this just keep that movement smooth and controlled I tend to go rather than counting reps I'm not a huge fan of counting reps I tend to just put a time on it, maybe do half a minute, maybe then build up to a minute, keeping that control there. If it's getting to the point where you feel like you're doing loads, you know, go up a weight once you've got that form and that movement controlled. We want to work to the point where we can feel that we've tied the muscles out, yeah, that they're not exhausted, we don't want to be in pain, but we want to feel that they've, they've kind of reached their fatigue point, lifting and pressing down. And then just pop both weights, take them forwards for a moment. Okay, round up, sit back into your embryo pose. So arms are going to tuck in, relax your shoulders. Okay, and then we're going to come on to our tummy. So we're going to do a movement again for targeting mid back muscles, but also for opening the chest now. This is kind of a version of a prone fly lift. So weights are optional here. I'm going to show you without weights, but if you did want to, you could use a light weight. But we're going to start by just lying face down, stretching our arms out, palms are facing down, resting comfortably, so hips are level, chest is level, and I'm resting either on my chin or I'm tucking and pointing my nose to the floor. As long as you're not lifting your head, you want to keep the back of the neck long, pull your shoulders away from your ears, Rotate so that your thumbs are on top, elbows are soft, and on your exhale, you're going to see if you can float both arms up and off the floor. And we're just going to hover them there, so we're keeping our fingers soft, pulling our shoulder blades if they're sliding back and down. You can see if we can hold this for maybe a good 15 seconds. So I'm just going to get a little close to the camera to show you the shoulder position. So I'm reaching out the front corners of my mat. My shoulders are low, I'm shrugging them down first and I'm drawing my arms back. I'm being mindful of the space between my shoulder and my neck, so I'm not letting that scrunch forwards, I'm trying to keep that down. And I'm imagining my shoulder blades are kind of hugging me, tucking under. My mid-back muscles are drawing in to create this pull and to support the weight of my arms. Okay, so that is my lift, my lift and my hold. Also trying to feel even. Okay, and then you're going to completely relax and just let your arms flop alongside you again. So we'll do that a couple of times. I'll show you a moving version of that as well if you wanted to make this a little bit more challenging. So just take a rest for a breath or two. Okay, and again, coming back to your position. So if you were using a weight, you would just hold the weight, thumb on top roll the shoulder back, chest is lifted, slowly lift and hold. Okay, now if that's challenging enough, you'd stay with your static work, you'd stay there. If that's easy, we're going to start to pull the elbows back and down and then reach forwards and away. So I'm pulling in and I'm reaching forwards. Okay, so that's just a second level that you could take this to if you wanted to make it a little bit more challenging. So rather than just lifting and holding, if you've got good clearance from the ground, if it feels comfortable, we're going to start to pull in, extend forwards, like a little lateral pull down, but we're using our arms as our weight and we're horizontal, we're prone. 
Okay, we we'll squeeze and then we'd extend. Okay, so you do maybe like 10 or 12 of those. Okay, and then we're going to rest. So again, arms tuck in, rest on a cheek, let your neck soften for a moment, feel your shoulders just sink forwards. Take some big breaths. Okay, hands come in. We're going to come slowly back up. So push yourself into your box position. Take a moment here. We're going to come up to standing and come through some simple stretches. You can do these first few stretches in your kneeling position if you prefer. Um, but always take your time when you come up to standing. Now, obviously, I'm not including lower body today in this video, but there is a massive link between upper and lower body, so don't neglect that. Don't assume that your problem is upper body. Sometimes it can be generated from lower, from diagonal lines or from the hips, for example. So be aware of that as well, but I'm just going to show you come up some nice stretches that particularly target our pectoral muscles and this bit here, the upper trapezius muscle. So as I said, you can stay down, do this kneeling if you prefer, um, or you can come up to standing. Um, but we're going to start just by doing a few little shrugs, so roll the shoulders back. Loosely clasp. Arms are going to come into the small of your back and you're just lifting the chest. Hold that nice easy stretch to start with, see how that feels. So I'm trying to feel that my shoulders have gone from there. I'm actively rolling them back and down. I'm lifting my centre chest up, I'm lifting my front ribs up. I'm keeping my neck long and if that's giving you a good stretch here maybe a little bit here that's all you need to do just hold that if that's easy you're going to bring your hands into the small of your back now start to draw your elbows in feel that I'm supporting my lower back chest is lifted okay hold that for another good breath And then release shake your arms loose right I'm going to come to stand in to show you this next one but you can as I say stay where you are be more comfortable there okay so we're going to include a little bit of this area as well now as well as our pecs so just feel that you're upright whether you're seated seated or standing we want to feel that the spine is nice and centered shoulders roll back okay I'm going to let my head gently tip over to my left side Okay, and I'm going to roll my shoulder back, I'm going to push my right hand down, bring it across and gently start to pull. So I'm trying to pull my shoulder away from my ear, so I'm lengthening this space. Okay, palm of my hand is facing behind me to begin with. Okay, trying to feel that stretch here. Okay, and then relax your arms, changing sides, so I'm going to let my head tip over to my right. So my left shoulder, I drop my arm and I gently pull down, just holding that there. Okay, whatever's comfortable, just you know, try not to make it uncomfortable where you're holding. Okay, and then rolling back. Right, now I'm going to come into a little pec stretch where we're going to use a corner or an edge for this one. So this isn't ideal because I don't want to move out of the room, you won't see where I've gone. Um, so I'm going to use the edge of my mirror, but what you need is like a door frame or a window frame. Something with an edge that you can support your arm against and we're going to rotate away. So I'm going to use the edge of my mirror here. So I'm standing in line with my edge and I'm going to bring my arm up so that my elbow is in line with my chest. My body is lined up, so I'm lying, standing directly above my, directly in line with my arm position. I'm not behind it, yeah. I'm not in front of it. I'm standing directly in line with it. Okay, and I'm just standing nice and tall, so I've got that nice straight line. Okay, my palm is pressing to the wall. My forearm is resting, so I've got that connection there. And I'm trying to keep my shoulder away from my ear. All I'm going to do, imagine you're standing on a on a dinner plate, and that plate's going to twizzle. So I'm going to rotate my body outwards, so I'm getting the stretch coming into my pec. Yeah, so I'm just turning my body away from the wall. 
I'm not moving my arm, I'm not stepping out, yeah, I'm staying completely upright, but I'm just trying to rotate away from it. And you should feel it coming across here. So that's your first stretch, so just hold that for a moment. Another way of doing this would be to do it with a straight arm, so you'd perhaps rest your palm or your fingers on something and rotate out. Just be careful if you can do that version. There's a tendency to overstretch the nerves by straightening the arm too much, so just try and keep a little softness in the elbow. But that can be a nice stretch to do as well, all through the inside line. I just personally prefer to do it with a bent, bent arm, bent forearm. So we're gonna hold that for a moment. So we're rotating out. Nice upright posture. Feel that your shoulder blade is hugging you from behind. Okay, and then I'm gonna come off it. So obviously you're gonna turn around and you're gonna do your opposite side. So you come to that ledge. So I'm lining up, you can see from here. And I'm just gonna rotate, turn away. So my shoulder blade is hugging me. I'm still staying in my original position, I'm not moving away from my arm. I'm just twisting from it. Okay, you hold that a good 10, 15 seconds. So the first position is my elbow is lined up with my chest and then I would come back. Second position on this, so coming back to the first sign that you did, we're gonna take the elbow and we're gonna raise it up a little bit higher. So now my elbow is lined up roughly with my ear. Exactly the same, I'm just gonna rotate out, hold that stretch, squeeze my, my shoulder blade, try and keep my neck neutral, two or three good breaths. <sighs> So being aware here, we don't want that to get grabby. We want to try and keep that low. So we're feeling it. Pectoral muscle maybe a little bit coming through the inside of the arm. The alternate would be straight arm version, but a little bit higher. Okay, and then come off that stretch. The second position on the other side, so we start lined up. But we take the elbow so it's in line with our ear. And then we just rotate outwards. Okay, hold it there. So again, if you prefer straight arm, just make sure that you're not locking out your elbow joint if you're doing a straight arm version. Try and keep the elbow soft. Okay, to second position. Okay, and then unwind. Roll both shoulders back. Right, so I'm gonna finish with a little bit of tricep work. Um, I'm going to include a lateral stretch for these sideline muscles and just another little upper trapezius, kind of the top line that we're going to stretch out as well. Um, so we're going to do um, our triceps first. Now again, like anything, two or three levels to go to, so I'll show you from the reverse angle. Go as far as you need to. You can do this from a seated position. Take the right arm, extend up. Let your fingers drop down the spine. So you want to feel that your elbow is pointed up to the ceiling and the head and neck stay neutral. Okay, from here, two versions, I'm either going to use my left arm and I'm going to start to pull the elbow further across and further back, so I'm increasing the stretch here. Okay, or if you've got the range, your left arm's going to come down, I'm going to feed the back of my left hand up my body, so I'm trying to clasp my hands together and then I can pull down, so my left hand, this bottom hand, is pulling my right hand further down my spine so it increases that stretch and then from here whether you're kneeling or whether you're standing tail tucks underneath you're just going to add a little lateral flexion into this so we're increasing that stretch coming down this sideline just check that if you're laterally flexing that you're not twisted yeah keep your chest facing forwards keep that distance from the centre of your chest to your belly button. Okay, and keep both feet firmly planted so we're also not kind of leaning, we're trying to feel that we're lifting up and over through our trunk. Okay, change in size, so left arm is gonna come up. Easy version, you're just gently holding on to it. You may be pushing it a little further down whilst pushing it further back. Or if you've got that range, you're going to come underneath. We go for our class. 
all the time my left shoulder blade is still hugging me my neck is neutral and then I'm going to add my little lateral flexion into this hold it and breathe okay and then release off roll both shoulders back right Come into a little bit of work for the upper arm, mid back area now then. So shake your arms loose. Let them just go floppy again, relax around the neck. Bring the arm and fold it across the body so my palm faces behind me. My other arm is going to come underneath, I'm going to hug. Now as I do this, I don't want to turn my body with it, yeah? I want to keep my shoulders and the centre of my chest pointing forward so they're not twisting my spine. I'm trying to pull and stretch all around here and then shoulder drops yeah it's another time where if you're not careful it will lift up so we want to keep it low for some of you, you might not feel this is much of a stretch but you're aiming to feel it roughly around here top of your deltoid upper arm back of the shoulder blade maybe neck just stays soft <sighs> okay shake your arms loose change in size so we come across other arm is going to come underneath so that's kind of hugging and drawing the upper arm close to my body i'm keeping my shoulder low shoulder blade active and i'm just holding it there just hold it and breathe okay and then roll both shoulders back shake your arms loose right I'm gonna finish with just a really easy recline stretch now so this is one that you could kind of go into and hold this for a, a minute or so if you wanted to uh, so I'm just gonna adjust this again so you can see all of me so I'll show you from two angles you're gonna come back to your mats and you're just gonna lie completely flat for a moment checking that I'm on the video screen yes you can see me hopefully okay so you can have your legs straight or your knees bent whatever's easy we just open out, stretch back, feel your shoulders sink into the floor. Try and draw your shoulders away from your ears, neutral neck position. Hold that for a breath. If that feels okay, we're gonna change the angle slightly. So we're gonna go a little higher or a little closer together. And we're just gonna keep adjusting this. So we're kind of stretching and opening out in several different directions and the reason being our pectoral muscle it's not a horizontal or a vertical muscle it's a kind of angle so there's you know it kind of almost fans out so we need to stretch it in more than just one plane so this is a really nice way you know if you start in say roughly here so you reclined on the ground open here a few breaths and then take it maybe here 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 you could even start to come down but we're actively trying to push our arms away. So if someone's pulling your arms, they're kind of stretching you from one side to the other. So we're creating this real feeling of pulling and lengthening these muscles. But to do this while you're reclined, it just makes it so much easier because you can really kind of let your body weight sink into the ground. You can relax and hold it perhaps a bit longer than you would if you were trying to do it standing. Because our arms are supported by the floor, aren't they? So it becomes a really passive stretch. Whereas if I'm doing it upright, yeah, my arms are quite heavy, so that's quite an active stretch. So I would finish off with this, and you could spend, as I say, a good few minutes finding different placements. Just make sure that your neck is neutral, your shoulder blades are flat to the ground, and you're actively trying to extend out through the fingertips, finding different places, comparing your left and your right side. Finally, a little softness in the elbow. Don't lock out the elbow joint even if you like that feeling you know if you're a hypermobile person and you just like to lock out your arms i you know i'm the same on hypermobile for this one we just want to keep that little softness so we're kind of stretching here we're not trying to extend that so feel that your arms being pulled out but your elbow starting to stay slightly soft okay and then just relax your arms once you've done several different points on that i would finish with my arms in palms are down shoulders are heavy just letting my arms go very floppy and take a few easy breaths. 
pick so and then you can obviously hold that for a little bit longer so i hope that's given you a few ideas so obviously you could do all this together you could do this as a, a mini little shoulder workout if you do feel that you need it or you could just take elements from it but i would recommend a combination of mobility work decompressive work activation work you know kind of create space around the joints get everything firing up then do your strength movements um, and then do your your stretches um, and hopefully that would, would help um, either with any shoulder issues that you've currently got or it will just help to prevent checking your posture as well um, and it's quite a nice thing if you can do this in front of a mirror um, just to notice the difference between your posture at the beginning and at the end there's a good chance that your shoulders would have dropped down a little bit they would have gone further back as well even just during one session because we've kind of reset everything um, so i hope you've enjoyed that guys thank you for tuning in take care